right, welcome back, everyone. Hi. I'm Clay. I'm the track chair today for the remote collaboration, education, and training track. And if you've been in here for a while, you're already familiar with me. But um, welcome back um, after that great break that we all needed. Um, we've got a couple more sessions left, and I'm so excited about this next talk. Um, we've got Musina Morris here today, and um, her talk is called VR and Undergraduate Education, Pushing the Limits of Immersion Across Disciplines. Musina L. Holmes Morris, PhD. She's the Interim Department Chair and Assistant Professor of Chemistry at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. We just found out today that I'm also from Georgia, so we had that in common. Her research encompasses working in the Morehouse Makerspace Exploration Center, 3D printing specialized laboratory equipment for those with autism and other developmental disorders. She is the PI of the Morris Research and Innovation Group, where they research and develop technologically innovative solutions for those with autism. She also works as a science research coordinator for the TRIO program, Upward Bound Math and Science State at Morehouse College. She's first delved into VR with her high school students. Dr. Morris is the Morehouse College's 2021 Vulcan Teacher Award of Excellence awardee who launched her advanced inorganic chemistry course in virtual reality in the spring of 2021 in the digital twin campus created by Victory XR on the Engage platform. This is very, very impressive. We can't wait to hear about this. Welcome, Musina. Come on up. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So, I'm a professor, chemistry professor. You have an assignment. Go ahead and text Messina Moore, text 428-222-333. I'm gonna move forward. It's gonna be on the next slide, but there's also some, also some cards that are floating around that has that information on it, so you won't miss out. They travel through space and back in time. As VR pioneers in one of the most exclusive races beyond the world. Where skill, creativity, and innovation is everything. And failure is not an option. Right now, at this moment, you at AWE 2021 will experience Morehouse in the Metaverse. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here today. I will be talking about VR in undergraduate education, education and how we push the limits of immersion across disciplines. This is my CV, basically. And Clay did a great job of introducing me, so you can read through all of those wonderful things. What that does not say is that I stand here as one, but I stand here as many. I stand on the shoulders of giants, and I am the one person who has a story of how this type of education bridges the gap for understanding for young people. And I am so proud to be the facilitator of this information at Morehouse College. Everyone's seen this, right? Like it's the elephant in the room. We talked about it, right? So Mark Zuckerberg said something that was very, very important when he talked about the metaverse. He said that the future will be made by all of us. All of us, not one of us, but all of us. And so we will stand united. And how do we do this? So when we talk about education in the metaverse and what that really looks like, over here you can see the lost generation, all the generational names, the baby boomers, generation X, and what that looks like all the way through to generation alpha. But who are they really? When you think about the diffusion of innovation that Everett Rogers created, he talked about innovators being just a small percentage of the population. And then there were early adopters. And then you have right here this chasm, this disconnect that occurs. Then the early majority of people start to come in, then the late majority, and then finally you have those laggards, right? 
Well, we are at the state where baby boomers and some Generation X people, myself included, are facilitators of this in information. At the end of Generation X to Generation Y, we have our innovators moving on into building creators. And then, like my four-year-old son, he's an early adopter. He's already immersed. He already has had Zoom parties, right? So he's already excited about staying in the headset all day. Oh, let's see. Okay, my poll didn't 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 take on the on the slide because he'd have to say trust this add in. <laughs> I guess we didn't anticipate that. But that's technology. It happens. You know, we roll with the punches. Plus, hey, hypothesize to me the biggest challenges that you think educators face regarding the, the metaverse. Just call out anything. What do you think? Scale. Scale. What else? Understanding what it is. Understand, understanding what it is. What else? First time, First time users. What else? What do we got? Price, price, very important. What other things? It's accessibility. That's the one I was waiting for. Accessibility for all. How do we make this type of technology accessible for all? How do we make it accessible for our youngest as well as our oldest? Remember, we have lifelong learners, right? And we're going to have to make this accessible by all of us. So we'll just move past our poll, but we got God, it was supposed to make a real nice word cloud for you. I don't know. It's not moving forward, Keith. But Morehouse College entered the metaverse in the spring of 2021. And we did it with the help of wonderful educational partners like Victory XR, who built a digital twin campus of Morehouse. We did it in a global pandemic. When I tell you we implemented this in 60 days. So, in December, we got coaxed into coming to a demo with Steve Grubbs. And then, after we did that, we were able to uh, develop and work together as a team of collaborating collaborators. So, if you don't know about Morehouse College, it is the alma mater of Martin Luther King Jr. So, the heart of social justice, right? So, we're in Atlanta, Georgia. We're a private, historically black men's liberal arts college. And there are many, many notable Morehouse alum, which we call Morehouse men. And the ones that we love so much who entertained us, Spike Lee and Samuel L. Jackson, major creators in their era. And so at Morehouse, our goal is to build creators. We entered the metaverse in the spring of 2021. Qualcomm supported us getting these headsets to our students. Very important because cost is a factor. And that's a huge challenge, not just for colleges and universities, but also for public schools. And so finding these tech companies that are really able to help assist us in getting the technology where it needs to be, which is in the hands of our students, is very important. How do we implement this? We are educators and we thought about that first. We looked at the student learning outcomes for each discipline. So we implemented this in biology, men's health, in chemistry, my advanced in organic chemistry course, because I'm a chemistry professor. We also implemented this in our world history class. And the main thing that we did when we first sat down was we looked at the student learning outcomes and we decided on a plan. Then we began to map out the scenery and the setting and where we thought maybe these lessons would take place, but we wanted to make it more than just a Zoom room. We didn't want it to be like they were immersed in this headset, but they could have gotten the same thing if they were sitting in front of us. We wanted them to actually be engaged in the content, and that's what's really, really important. So this is my advanced in organic chemistry lab, and we did it in the lab class. Um, kind of like a studio situation because we have recitation and we have lab. And so we have about five hours. And the way that we did this was for chemistry, there's not a lot of content that is available, but I am a creator. 
right? And what I decided to do was look at different pedagogies that we could use to access the same content. So what you see here is how we get them started, because everyone asks me that question. We do onboarding on Morehouse's Digital Twin Campus. Students are able to move around and immerse themselves in the environment, walk around, learn all the controls, build up their VR stamina. And then what we also did was this lesson in space. Now, we can't be in space, right? You can't see molecules, but they did. They were allowed to see molecules. And yes, we've used molecular modeling sets for years, and it's really not done uh, the students any favors, but frustrated them. But this situation allowed them to have alpha and beta particles floating around them. They were able to see themselves working together as a team. They were able to talk to one another, and they did it without any constraints of space or really time in their eyes because they stayed immersed and engaged in this, this lesson throughout the entire class period. This particular lesson was about assets and bases. And so they had a problem-based learning um, exercise that they did where they talked about Gertie's dilemma. So the young guy in, in this the young Morehouse student had GERD and they had to travel through the digestive system, looked at his inflamed tissue and decide what was his remedy. And because antacids are made of metals, they had to decipher which one was gonna work best for his condition. So there's many ways to get at the content for students. This is World History 112. Dr. Ovell Hamilton taught this course, and he was able to actually create a situation where students were in World War II battle. So he had a battleship, and he worked with Victory XR and their developers in order to create the scene. And then, because, you know, we have to add a little flavor to our classroom, we add a little bit more, right? So we are the ones that help them to actually build out the scenery that we need for our students. And then we add a little bit more to it. So I'm gonna go to the next class, which is men's health. Our uh, first year experience biology course, which is a men's health course. So health disparities run rampant in, in, in the United States, right? And really globally. So in this course, we teach our young men how to take care of their health and how to understand what their health means. And Dr. Ethel Vereen uses this barbershop model in order to do it. He also had a doctor's office where they would meet and he would talk to them about important issues that face men's health. They had opportunities to go through field trips, through the, uh, through the reproductive system, the circulatory system, the nervous system. And what was so important about these students is they're first year students. And it's a, a great deal of them <laughs> they come into the, it was about 25 students. He had also a TA that worked with him in this space, but he created content that was culturally relevant for our students. It was warm, it was inviting, and they felt like they were at Morehouse. We did some cross-disciplinary work with Dr. Tanya Clark, and we looked at the common text, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. And so there was a module that I had in inorganic chemistry called Metals in Medicine, where we talked about how she was treated with radium, and then over time, her HeLa cells, her cells were actually used to cure, be a curative for cancer, even though medically, medical ethics were violated during this process. And so we talked about medical ethics and Afrofuturism. They talked about it in men's health as well um, through the lens of looking at cancer and illnesses that affect black men like sickle cell primarily. But we really talked about how the evolution of this young lady um, went from being like a human to almost superhuman in this particular reality. And our students love this lesson. They never get to have two professors in the same class at the same time across a discipline. What's most important about making education, this work for education is that we have to have culturally responsive teaching practices. We have to have inclusive and equitable learning communities. And how do we do that? We empower our students by giving them a sense of environment and climate that is warm. We bring experiences to them that are emotive, that make them have to have empathy, that make them have to lean into their hearts. We build the minds of disciplined men, but more than that, we build the hearts 
of the minds of disciplined men. And that's really important. So we access the educational metaverse using the Engage platform. And I love it as an educator because you can do all the things that I can't do with you all right now. Like if y'all were like on your phone and not paying me any attention, then I could just summon you to me. I could just mute you and then I could just make you pay attention to me. And guess what? You can't look outside of that VR headset because you're in it. And I would know because when you take it up, it says away. <laughs> So then I know you're not paying me any attention. But I loved it because beyond the classroom management, we were still able to do group work. We were still able to have private one-on-one -on -one conversations if I needed to with the student. We had surveys and quizzes that I were, was able to grade. Well, it did it for me. So uh, I just had to put it in. But, you know, as an educator, you love something that already puts it in the grade book, right? So um, we were able to project videos from online and access different spaces. We took field trips, and I loved it because you could be seated. You didn't have to be standing or walking around. Um, and my students loved it because they got to see me. And they hadn't seen me, and I hadn't seen them, but it has face-enabled avatars. And they were so excited to actually see me in person after not seeing me for over a year because I'm Dr. Mom, y'all, promise. Um, so the feedback that we got, we got some qualitative data uh, pieces and we have some quantitative um, information, but the feedback was so empowering. Students said that it was engaging and fun. They were awed. Um, they loved the battleship experience and they felt honored being the first class to experience this. The inorganic chemistry students were engaged. It was fun. It was interactive. They made 3D molecules in space. Men's health feedback said that I think the most important part of this, besides interacting with the heart and understanding better, was that he said that I would like to keep expanding my knowledge, and that is the goal. We want them to continue to engage with this content beyond just this course. We also have some quantitative data that shows that if you look at online in VR, the orange bars, if you look at the blue bars, which is just our typical online format, and then our traditional classrooms, both online, but VR actually shows better outcomes in history. This was a history course in the final grade, essay grade attendance, which is important and even in their ability to present because they weren't dealing with the anxiety of being, uh, you know, fidgeting or, you know, maybe not being, feeling like themselves that day, um, which we all kind of go through. I am giving a talk, right? So then we, in, um, in organic chemistry, students also felt like this information was very useful in helping them, you know, understand the concepts. So all of the modules and everything we did, because four is very useful, so we're, we're very close to fours here. Um, and then in the Qualtrics survey that was done for men's health, what we saw here, because the VR th information is right here, is that they found that it was extremely effective in allowing them to meet the learning outcomes and facilitating their learning, even over just traditional methods of like asynchronous uh, learning, discussion boards, and all the other things that we do when we're in an analog classroom. So you were supposed to talk to me about what the educator does um, and where we start. We start with our student learning outcomes, so we're gonna skip by that. But what does the future of Morehouse in the metaverse look like? It's about educational equity and allowing our students to be creators in this space. So this semester, I teach analytical chemistry and those students, some of them were in my previous course, they are actually creators. They are actually creating the space that they want to see. And that's really, really important. So they're learning how to engage with this content. We are going to engage our um, health profession students. We're going to develop content um, using the Unity platform. So having students actually create the 3D scenes themselves. We also are talking to our students about digital intellectual property, which is already infused in the classroom this semester. And equitable educational practices in the metaverse is very important. But we're also training students in our, in our research labs, also in VR. So I have a Unity Social Impact Grant for Morehouse in the Metaverse, and this is a really important quote. I don't just want to have a seat at the Metaverse table. 
I want to build it. I want to build it because there should not be multiple metaverses. There should just be one. And so Morehouse in the metaverse must emerge to continue to create creators who create developers who then have first adopters be able to use this technology for the good of humanity. Thank you so much. So this is a trailer that's just playing yeah. in the background, but that's it. Um, I do have some acknowledgments for our sponsors, our team, uh, Qualcomm, Southern Company, Unity Technologies, um, Victory XR. We also have Meta that, that sent 300 headsets to our campus, allowed us to take our education to another level. Um, and so VR became the classroom at Morehouse College. And we thank you so much for your time and attention. And I want to also acknowledge my gamer husband, because without him, I would not be standing here <laughs> because he put me in a headset when the, P when the PlayStation had the headsets. Yeah. And, uh, and my five sons who are allowing me to be here right now and, uh, and stand before you. All so right. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Big round of applause for Messina. Let's open up the floor for just a few questions. I see you back there first. Thank you for the presentation. Um, so I saw that you said one of your courses actually had two professors because there was potentially overlap or you wanted to cross uh, content. Do you see that becoming more and more common now that you have virtual reality as an application? And how does that kind of affect courses in general for a university level? Well, I think it's a good thing. So for us, it made us collaborate with one another in a way that we never had before. We talk about it, but this made us be about it. So it was really important for us to be able to see the talents and gifts that our other faculty members had. And that's what made this team so great. So it's four of us um, that started out, one in English, one in history, one in myself in chemistry, and then a biology professor. And just we all worked together, 60 days, I mean it, like literally until we hit the ground running. So we had all everything already built out in 60 days and we did it together. And that's how you have to do it. You have to do it together. Big sprint. Who else? Here. Thank you. Thank you, this is terrific. Uh, quick you. question for you. So in terms of building it out and delivering it, were you entirely in VR? That is part one and part two with assessments did you then go back to traditional assessments or did you revisit how you're assessing students because they've learned so differently as well? A little bit of both still. So we're still straddling both worlds. And for me, I liked being able to assess them in the headset because they could, well, we use the periodic table a lot and you need to be able to see it. And so I built out a lecture room. It has the big periodic table on both of the walls and they can't, I hate to say it, they can't cheat. You can't cheat in VR. Like, you, you just can't because they have their own tablets. It's, it's, it's feeding them the, the assessment, right? So any information that they might need, any reference material, I put in there. Um, they have their own little notes that they can, you know, write on, their little sticky notes. So it's, it's impossible for them, even if they talk to each other, I know, right? Um, and, and they can't see each other's paper because uh, just, you just can't. And so it's a, it's a wonderful way to really know, did they learn the material or are they putting on? So I liked it. I loved it. Last question right here. Okay. One phrase that you used during your presentation was um, building empathy with the users. Did you have any uh, big lessons learned with that or the actual, like specific to how, you, how that was accomplished? So we wanted to make sure that our students understood the limitations. So we did have a student that actually had an eye condition and could not actually be an immersive VR. So they engaged through their computer because they had just had surgery. But just even understanding that sometimes you can't access this content in the same way and then how do you still engage that student in the content and my students were really good in doing that but also creating experiences where they could feel so victory xr created the slave ship la amistad for dr tanya clark's 
uh, Blacks in Wonderland course that she teaches. And when I tell you, if you, if you didn't understand slavery before, you will understand it when you get on that slave ship and you see the uh, devastation. And so it was really about working with our developers and creating experiences that we had to put a disclaimer on even because they, they really would trigger you know, certain experiences. And we would tell our students, listen, we're taking you through World War II or we're taking you through this uh, uh, terrorist uh, situation or you know, this war zone that you have to, to endure. And so remember, people are living through this. We're gonna take you to a really impoverished nation or town. And um, as you experience this, I want you to think about it. This is going on now. You know, this experience is someone's real life and really trying to get them to understand how then do we solve the more complex issues in the world instead of just looking at this as a tool for them to engage and have fun. But how do we use this to solve some of the more complex social justice issues that really, really are plaguing our world? Because as wonderful as this content is, we can't be more concerned about this than we are about men. There are real issues with accessibility and outcomes for students in poor communities um, and a lot of socioeconomic disadvantages. And so while we're having a great time about these new toys, we have to also remember how can we make this one metaverse? How can we make this accessible for the least of us? It's very important. We cannot forget humanity because humanity cannot wait. Thank you. Thank you.